Hey, Bowman. Well, now you good at riding this bike yet. I learned new bikes poorly. I learned new things poorly, actually. Well, that's not true. Ultimately, I learned them well. I just take my time at it, I guess. Well, take my time implies I have an option about it. Ah. I have no gear. Okay, I hadn't started off that bad yet. Interesting when the gear indicator indicated nothing. Well, I'll probably speed up all that. It's my back road. Headed to the park. Cut through the park. My girlfriend is busy for a couple hours. Sunday morning. Reads 85 degrees. I don't think that's accurate. By the end of the day, it'll be the hundred and something. I haven't learned the shift points. It's odd, it's weird. I'm shifting like I've never ridden before. The bike's quite a bit taller than the Buell. And it leans amazingly quite a lot it doesn't fall over I have yet to drop it this is Sunday I got it Wednesday in this uh, cavalcade of an experience I'll try to put some pictures up And uh, tell a little story there. Hello, goosies. When you roll off the throttle on this thing, boy, does it slow. The friction zone is one of those things that takes me a while to get used to. And uh, I think it's the hydraulic clutch makes it feel a little different. I've never driven one before. And many people might say, nah, that doesn't make a difference. I would remind you, I'm real slow on the uptake on new equipment. This new car, motorcycle, new scuba gear, new scuba gear setup. I tend to get very, very good with them. Uh, well, average I guess. I'm not trying to brag or anything. I'm certainly not worth that. But I tend to get fine with them. But I'm always kind of very stunty and aware of them at first. Uh, so I don't know why I'm going too slow. But the park actually. I'm supposed to go fast. This was nice on the Buell. You're going to see some hills here. 
boy, I could just creep up this in the fuel without hardly in third gear without hardly any RPM. And Peaky does pretty good. Just unnerves me. I'm feathered a little bit. In second. If I was a little more used to the view, I could feather it nicely. Whatever that was. Hundred mi or ninety two miles. I thought the first night I got it that I had ridden a hundred miles on. I don't know what I was reading, but uh First day I got it, you'll see. My friend helped me go get it. I trailered the Buell down and trailered it back. And uh, various the sundry. And uh, so from here to the dealer, which is in Grassroots BMW, in Cape Girardeau, Missouri. Oh, don't drop it! You know me, I drop bikes, so... And I don't have any uh, kind of... fancy guards down here or anything yet. I'll have to get some TourTech ones. I kind of like those. And they make some in black. Which this engine is black, so... At any rate, Jeff helped me go down and get it. It's basically nine, ten hour ordeal just to drive down there and back, assuming you you were to go down there, hang out for an hour and come back. It's about four and a half hours from where I live. Um, we're not quite that bad. And uh, so we get back, it's dark, I still hadn't ridden it. Went down to the dealer, we made the deal, I talked to him a lot in advance. We didn't have much time because uh, I was leaning on my friend Jeff there a little bit. So I didn't want to burn a lot of time taking a long ride around and then just making the go home horrible. And... Uh, knew pretty much of what I wanted anyway, so. So away we went. Four and a half hours back. Got back to Jeff's house, which is where I rode the Buell over to in the morning, and uh, got on it to ride home. My house about, I don't know, three hours away from, or three miles away from Jeff's. Ended up riding over to my girlfriend's and taking a little bit of the scenic route. At some point I looked down and I thought I was looking at the odometer. I thought I'd hit uh, 100 miles by the time I got back to my house that evening. So being tired and worn out once I got on the bike, well, it was fun. Well, <laughs> I caught myself doing this. I'll tell you. That. <laughs> That's that. Here's sad, sad uh, exit of Mr. Buell, who liked to break my leg. I say like, because I thoroughly believe he enjoyed it. 
Haven't had this on gravel yet. Hadn't had it hardly anywhere yet. I have a lot of experience recently on gravel. like the third time I've done that. I suppose that's okay. I mean, I stalled the Buell quite a lot more than that before I kind of remembered how to ride. I know, these things are getting incredibly popular and everybody has one. Uh, I've owned one of these things since I think 2004, um, 2003 maybe, before they had the 1200, 1150 GS. So I pulled the trigger and got one. And so far it's been worth every dime. Of course, that hasn't actually cost me a single dime yet. So, I'm not sure that that's a real good comparison. And I'm just out wandering around. So if you think it looks like I'm meandering around, you're right, I am. Why do I keep going into parking lots and turning around? simple. I think uh, going slow is harder than going fast. Anybody can ride it down the highway, which I do, but this morning I was feeling a little like I wanted to uh, go slow, at least until it got too hot. So, little turns, back streets, that kind of stuff. Try not to break your pretty, beautiful new bike. Hello. We're a local motorcycle dealer. parking lot. Sunday, so they're closed. So, there it is. Got my old bags for the time being. I'll get some probably metal ones or plastic, some hard side ones. I always like something that's lockable. I don't necessarily need the Super Adventure metal boxes, but, you know, they look good, so. It's the Rally Edition, brand new more bike than I certainly need or can handle probably. Uh, traction control, got the alarm, got the ABS, got the 
Blah, blah, onboard computer. Blah. It's got everything, actually. I think it has all the options except for tire in, you know, pressure inflation, which I don't want because it puts something inside the tire or the rim that's problematic or you can't get a tube in there and you can't do other things. I know it's tubeless, but I'm not confident. And a tiny, tiny little tool kit underneath it. I got this, uh, my GPS I just put on there, but short term, when um, about a month, when I bought it, they were running a promotion, so I get a navigator floor and mountain cradle thing. Okay, well, it can't be that bad, right? Certainly about a thousand dollars, or I think it's, I can't remember which garment it's made off of, but um, it's about a thousand dollar GPS anyway, so, you know, couldn't be too bad. Got mirrors up where I can see them. I don't have to reach up and hold on to them. Uh, my ears are not bleeding, and for once I can tell that a little bit of wind noise gets in this helmet. I never could tell before uh, because the Buell was so frickin' bloody loud. Uh, got something there. At any rate, uh, it's a little high. Didn't seem that high. It's got the electronic suspension thing. And then if you hold it, I guess it does some other shit. Ooh, I can feel that raising the preload. Bias it's back to street. Single rider, sport, comfort, normal, sport, whatever. It does not feel as solid as the Buell did. The Buell just held a line and it there was no sense of any kind of I guess pushing around I'm sure this one isn't sliding but there's this little sense plus some of it is you know I could move this suspension and boy you couldn't do that on the Buell of course you hit a, a line like that in the road uh, on the Buell and uh, well you felt it in your spine I can't feel any of this, so maybe it's just a little unnerving. And uh, I don't tend to go for things that got a lot of computers in them. But, boy, there's no way around them these days. But the uh, turning radius of this thing is incredible. If I can manage to be careful and not drop it and therefore make the turning radius crap by breaking it. You tell that it's uh, kind of an expensive bike that I paid for here, and well, to me it's expensive. I know it ain't much to some people, but I don't normally finance things or buy fancy. But you know what? Uh, hell with it. I did this time. Bought a brand new bike for me because I wanted it. <laughs> but I can say this, I understand why all you guys that have had these bikes just smile when people say, oh that's too expensive or that's too fancy or that's too whatever has the odd suspension. Well, to me, it's odd. All I know is from swing arms and fork. Uh, but, you know, it really sticks. I went to a corner the other day slowing down because it kind of caught me off guard. It was in a neighborhood. I was slowing down 30, 25, 22. And because uh, I thought if I went any faster, I wouldn't make the bloody, you know, I wouldn't be able to make the corner. And, uh, and it just kept leaning and I had to keep leaning it and I had to keep, I had this real sense that I was leaning too far over for how slow I was going. Just from previous experience, but the bike never wobbled once. It's just, it leans. 
a lot, or maybe it's because it's so tall, or maybe it's because, the because, I said because, sorry about that, maybe it is because uh, I can see part of the bike, you know, the fuel, could, you couldn't see the bike, you had to go, whoop, how fast are you going, whoop, look at the mirror, look at the mirror, oh, I can see the actual bike, it's very strange, so it may not be as tall, all that tall to where my rump is, but it's just visually kind of cool and a little, you know, scary. And I don't know where the motor's happy yet. It takes me a while to learn how far down to lug it where it's not good for it anymore. Buell, I knew right where you could go, and uh, it was still happy. Much lower than that was a problem. This one I hadn't learned. I'm thinking it's basically 3,000 in, and then uh, you know I don't know upper end out. I haven't had it over 4,500 uh, manual break in wearing time. I don't want to run it it's too hot and heavy. Um, but I've, I've had to feather the clutch down when I pulled it down below 3,000 to maybe 2,500 to 3,000. And, uh, boy, that's that port suspension. Ah, instantly much more comfortable on that bump. And downshifting this thing will uh, resist. Where am I at? I need to pile up a set of tools, though I can tell you that. Uh, the toolkit seems to be getting smaller and smaller and smaller. I read articles about what the 1200 comes with. Seems like every year it comes smaller. There's uh, no suspension wrenches and all because of the VSA stuff. Okay, I guess I can understand that not even a spark plug puller. Um, it just seems uh, really silly. There's no ranch that I can tell for the, to get the axle out. Uh, usually there's a bar you put in there to, of course I don't know how this axle works, I assume it threads in. This thing has more bloody choices on it than anything I know probably going to mute most of this audio because I'm just prattling on. <laughs> <laughs> 